Well, we're joined on the line here on Off the Ball Saturday on News Talk uh, to pay tribute to Jack Charlton, who has very sadly passed away at the age of 85, by the former Republic of Ireland captain and manager Mick McCarthy. Mick, good afternoon. Good afternoon, John. How are you? Not too bad, thanks. Mick, a sad day for the country. Very sad. Yes, I mean, we all knew that he'd been, he'd been unwell, Jack. Uh, and that was, I had breakfast with Tony Cascarino the morning, which was a nice surprise. I bumped into him. And he said to me that, uh, he, that Jack was really unwell. And uh, I spoke to him just after his birthday. And, and desperately sad news today to hear that he's, he's died. But, you know, he's, he's been having a long, uh, he's had a long illness now. How will you remember Jack Mick? He gave the country some marvellous days as Republic of Ireland manager. I remember him as the bloke that gave me the best time of my life in football. That's how I remember him. As, as a really, I knew him before. I, I used to have a time with him in the Red Lion pub, and so I'd, I'd become friendly with him. Uh, and well, I'm saying friendly with him. I was in awe of him. He was nice as ladies as I could him. Like you, were, you were already an Irish international. You know, and I'd, I'd worked with Norman Hunt and Alan Clark, and then to get with Jack was just, he was fabulous. And he, he met me as a player, and I said he gave me the time of my life as a footballer over 88 and 90. It was wonderful. You were an Irish international before he came along. What do you remember of your early interactions with them, Mick? Uh, well, when he first came into the job. Yeah. He was just, he made it plain and simple what he wanted. And, uh, I mean, I know, I know he uh, sometimes gets some of this, this long ball game, but he was, he was very tactically aware, Jack. And he was the one that turned a team of, well, a group of good players into a team that was a, a real force to be reckoned with and a team that qualified for 88, 1994, or the country that did. But uh, he, he galvanised the team. He made it simple. He knew what to do. He knew how to do it. He knew what the opposition didn't like. And he simplified it. And it, it just made it, uh, you know, I said, he, he turned some of the good players that we had into really great players, international players. I think the day that kind of put us on the map, Mick, was Euro 88 in Stuttgart when we beat England. And from that moment on, I think we always kind of felt as supporters, and I don't know about you as a team, that we'd always find a way to, to, to win or to get through. Yeah, the, the, uh, the team spirit was incredible. The, the, the willingness to work for each other, the togetherness. And that was, I mean, Jack created that, and that was with him, but that, that was with the country as well. That was with the fans. You know, the, the, the sense of belonging to that squad, to that team, and to and that time of the fans and the country was just amazing. And he, he turned it around. I, I heard a, a fella today who was 16 back in 88 uh, when we beat England, and, and he was saying, born in Ireland, he was saying how it, it transformed the country and galvanised the country. And, and I thought, well, I've been saying that for a long time, but it was nice to hear a guy now who was 16 there and him saying it. He was living in Ireland. And a bloody good team as well, Mick, when, like, you can consider we played Rush off the park in your 88, and we were unlucky maybe to lose to Holland, and they reached the final that year. Yeah, it was a good team. Uh, uh, you know, I think when, when, when you're in the team, sometimes players and teams don't get the recognition that they deserve. And there were some really good players. I mean, top, top players playing in that over 88 and 90. You know, and players playing at top clubs. I remember being sat in the dressing room in Georgia, speaking to um, one of the, the, the goalkeepers, a young kid, and he said he didn't, he didn't, re he couldn't recognise any of the team. And that there was, there were only four teams represented in this picture. There was Celtic, Manchester United, Tottenham, and Liverpool. That's what the Irish team was made up of. Our team was made up of, and they were good players, good team. Uh, and if you got good players and good team, and that will enough to work hard and. and you know, not be being, it, it makes for a formidable force, which it did. He made a captain, Mick, for Italian 90, Jack Charlton. Do you think he saw a bit of himself in you? I hope so. <laughs> but I'd, I'd take that as a, as a very big compliment because he got a World Cup winner's medal and was a, you know, stalwart for England in 66. And because of Leeds, he had 700 games or something. It was remarkable what he had. Um, maybe he did. Um, Maybe personality-wise, mine will be plain, but I've said to somebody this morning, he trusted me, which I'll forever remember him for. And, and 
I love the bones of him, Jack. You know, he uh, he entrusted me with the captaincy of Ireland, and it was the proudest moment of my life. Certainly walking down in Italy with that captain's armband on, it was great. And Jack gave me that. I wasn't, I wasn't the best team. I wasn't the best player in the team by any stretch of the imagination, but I guess he recognised something that uh, maybe I got others to play and to play in front of me. It was a magical tournament, Mick. Uh, Romania on penalties, playing Italy, the host country in Rome, meeting the Pope. Uh, it was like Conor Houlihan said, uh, I missed Ali Italian 90 as well. I was in Italy at the time. Yeah, best line ever, that one. That was, that was great. I've, I've repeated that a few times recently because, of, you know, we've been getting calls about the anniversary of different things. About, well, it was 88 and 90. And, yeah, it was. Uh, we were getting newspapers sent through you know the first 15 pages were full of the world cup <laughs> there was nothing going on it was it was amazing and then stories of people selling cars selling vans so coming over and say you know sell the car at, at the time it, it was you couldn't believe it and now you still hear the stories I, it wouldn't surprise me if someone's was still paying it off it was incredible what was jack like in the dressing room mick as he was when you saw him uh, ever on TV in front of the press, he was straightforward. Uh, I said he didn't complicate things. He told you what he wanted you to do and how he wanted you to do it. And I always remember him in, in 88 saying, uh, Peter Beardsley, if he gets the ball, just, just run at him and make him change direction. Somebody make him change direction and don't let him pick his head up. And... It, it was such a simple uh, task, and yet it was it was brilliant because what he meant was, of course, if Peter Beasley does allow to get turned, starts running with the ball, pick his head up, he's, a, he's hard to stop, and he will pick a pass. And I remember in that game, as soon as the ball went to him, he might be Paul, he could be me, he could be Kevin, he could be Paul, any one of us will run at him and make him change direction. And he, and he didn't play because of it. He, he, he didn't play as well. And... That is how tactically aware he was. And he didn't, he didn't dress it up, trying to be clever. He told you. And, and the thing was, if he told me, if he told us what we were doing, me as captain would make sure we did it as a team. And that was my job. And for a long time, when we look at the home record, Mick, teams did not know how to deal with it. No, they didn't. And, uh, of course, sadly, at the very end, teams did then find out how to deal with it because... Football had evolved and we'd come over about 10 years. Well, it was 10 years when Jack was starting to... Uh, when he came to his end, it was against Holland. And teams knew that what we'd do, and they, they started to uh, to plan for that, and they could deal with it better. But for 88, 90, 94, you know, wonderful, wonderful memories. And, and like you said, teams couldn't deal with us. Jack was a character, Mick. Uh, he liked to find a Guinness. He liked to fish. I think the nation here... We completely took him to our hearts. Obviously, you're uh, reflecting that sentiment today. Uh, he was a great man. He was a wonderful man. Yeah, yeah very open, very honest. When we, we saw, uh, you know, a real family man. His brother, his sorry, his son always would be there, John. Uh, and Pat, his wife, used to travel with him. We all got to know them as a family. He was a, a real lovely fella. And, and he had it with all the fans as well. I mean, it, you know... Some of the stories, I mean, playing in Northern Ireland, they're all giving the deals behind the door, and he, and he leaned into the crowd and literally said, give us a cig and light it, and lit it up. I mean, how he could just light the place up when he walked into it, you know, he was such a big personality. Uh, and I think whoever you sport of the day, the ones that had played in, in that squad and played regularly in that squad, would say the same as me, that they all, they all loved the bones of him. He was brilliant. Yeah, I think uh, his legacy may could be the art of the possible that I think the country changed under his, the way the team played under his uh, management and uh, it just gave us some wonderful days that we could we could compete on the world stage, be in the top eight in the world. What will his legacy be for you, Mick, is to, to, com to, com to conclude what is a very uh, sad conversation? Well, I think it's what you just said, and then the 16-year-old kid is what he was at the time, how it put a smile on the face of the country and I think it inspired the country to to go on and do things. I mean, at the time, it wasn't a great time in terms of financially. 
uh, you know, the houses being built. Uh, no, there weren't. I think I just think it had a, uh, it had an economic effect. I mean, <laughs> it probably had a devastating economic effect when everybody spent up going to uh, Germany and Italy. But it, it had a, it, almost like a productivity effect. Everything seemed to prosper on the back of that. And I'm, uh, listen, it's not always Big Jack did that. We were we were just a cog in that uh, part of the machine, and Jack uh, he turned it around. I think how he how he spoke to people, and he was so positive about it. And it did. Uh, listen, I think everybody will be sad in Ireland today. I think everybody would back my view that we all loved him. Make uh, sentiments which we completely uh, concur with, and we really appreciate your time, Mick, to join us on Off the Ball Saturday on News Talk to remember Jack Charlton, who's passed away at the age of 85. John, you know, it's, it's a pleasure. It's not a pleasure to be speaking about his death, but it's, it's a pleasure to be able to remember what he did for, for me, for the country, and for a lot of other people. And uh, if I can just offer my condolences to his wife, Pat, and all his family. Mick, you're a great man. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.